Hi guys, today we're doing cross-site scripting, also known as XSS. So to start off, what website is this? This is called Altoro Mutual. It's the domain. The address of the domain is demo.testfire.net, and it's a purposely vulnerable web application or a website used for testing a product called AppScan, which is made by IBM. Uh, AppScan is a vulnerability scanner and this is the vulnerable website they use for testing it. So, what is cross-site scripting? It's a basic web application vulnerability that attackers use to exploit their victims. Now, let's start with a basic form, HTML injection. HTML injection is a vulnerability where websites return user input back out onto the page. By permitting characters such as angle brackets less than and greater than, this allows attackers to inject valid HTML onto a website such as page breaks, divs and script tags. So I'll give you an example now with a search returning user input. So we'll try the word test. And now let's try that with HTML injection. You can see here that the word test is being returned back out to the page. So we'll try test in the word example. And around the word example, we'll put some HTML. So we'll put bold, b and slash b. So now you can see that the word test is being returned and the word example is after it, but it's in bold. So, this is known as HTML injection, but by injecting script tags specifically, an attacker can create an environment inside the browser in which they can execute custom code and programmatically control the vulnerable website on the client side. So, the user's browser, it's not being controlled from the server, it's being controlled once you receive the page, your browser, your browser renders it and does what the attacker wants you to do. So I'll give you some examples now with script tags. So if we look at this, you can see that we have a script here that we're going to insert and it's going to return the session cookie. Uh, what is a session cookie? A session cookie is a unique identifier, sort of like a temporary password, used for identifying ourselves after we log in and accessing classes and session objects that are loaded on the server side. So if we were to lose our session cookie to an attacker, they would be able to inject that into their own browser, refresh the page, and then access our account without needing a username and password. So let's have a look at this. If we inject this script tag into the search box on the top right and press enter, you can see that the script is after taking our session cookie and creating an alert box and it tells us that our session cookie is being sent to evil.com. That means an attacker can access our account on the bank, our Altoro Mutual vulnerable bank. So I'll give you now a second example. So in this case, here, what the attacker has done is they have their domain, evil.com, and they have an application running on that domain, which is xss.php, and a parameter, or a variable called xssparam, and the value of that variable is our cookie and this this bit is rendered on the client side and then it's put into the parameter and sent to the remote attacker so is that all just an alert box no javascript is also capable of carrying out complex attacks such as client side keyloggers natural language toolkits also known as chatbots 
It's capable of mapping your internal network, port scanning, and a whole lot more. So I'll give you an example now with a tool called Beef, Browser Exploitation Framework. I think that's what it stands for. So, what we do is we paste in our beef payload in here and we press go. And now we've been intercepted by our attacker. And we can see here, if we refresh this, that the attacker has picked up our client and can now execute exploits and payloads on us, the victim. So let's try and persist that so that it's difficult to remove. So we press execute on the bottom right. You can see the progress of that command here. And when that runs, we should get a result here. Okay, so the browser is hooked. Now let's try and force the victim into logging in and we'll log their password. So we'll go to Altoro Mutual, we'll get the address of the sign in page, and we'll paste it into our keylogger, and we'll redirect the victim to the sign in page and then log their details. So we'll press execute. Now we'll go to this, and it should automatically refresh. Now, we've been redirected. We type in the username and password, admin password. And we don't even have to press login. And we go back to our attacker, and we see the status of that command. You can see that they've logged our activity, admin and password. So, what all an attacker has to do is send us a malicious link with their JavaScript hook in the address. And if we were to click that, we would be vulnerable to their attack and we'd have to somehow come up with a fix for our web application to prevent this. So how do we prevent it? So, get you an example of encoding and filtering. So, in a two-step process, if we encode the input so that it's not interpreted in its destination, and filter the output so that data is sent to an environment where, uh, where it could cause harm, that data is removed. So what does this do? This prevents data loss. So if we were to filter on input instead, and the data isn't being sent to an environment where it could cause harm, such as an angle bracket or something that would interrupt XML being sent into a database where it's not rendering XML, we'd lose that angle bracket. But if we encode on input and filter on output, depending on what the destination is, such as a database or a browser, then we have minimal data loss and maximum security. Now there are libraries for doing this, such as ES API by OWASP, and that'll allow you to encode, filter, create whitelists, blacklists, and select what type of destination you're going to. That's an all-in-one solution to cross-site scripting. Thanks very much.